Hey, welcome to Treetop Flights, where I'm documenting the build of my RANS S21 Outbound. My prior videos discussed the reasons I chose the S21, and also discussed the inventory process, as well as the workbench construction. Check out those videos if you, if you missed them. In this video, I'm going to discuss the vertical stabilizer, which is the first part of my construction. Well, I'm on the way. Uh, with my vertical stabilizer. I'd say it's my first part, but I did complete the rudder at the Rands Rudder Workshop in Hayes, Kansas. So this is the first part on my own, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you've got some spars that you need to connect to some ribs, a lot of clickoing that goes on, uh, and then some riveting. A couple things that I learned and on the way is I, I am using the air compressor rivet gun sent by Rands. Uh, it did fine on all the 1 8 rivets, which there's a ton of them. Uh, but these uh, stainless steel rivets uh, that are larger for the hinges, the rudder hinges, there's eight of them. And those rivets were bare to pull. The gun at 50 pounds of pressure didn't pull them. I moved it up to 90 pounds. It still it pulled the rivet but left the mandrel in place. And after doing some research, um, someone recommended going above 90. My gun was rated at... 90 pounds so I moved it up to 100 pounds and sure enough it pulled it uh, also did some research on priming rivets there's a lot of discussion about whether you should or shouldn't anytime you mix materials the aluminum rivets certainly aluminum to aluminum is not an issue but anytime you mix metals you can get corrosion the uh, stainless steel rivets to the aluminum a lot of people say well stainless steel doesn't corrode but if there was a chart someone from the Rands Group sent, and it does show that aluminum against stainless, there is corrosion that occurs. So I did dip them in a Rust-Oleum uh, metal primer prior to pulling the rivets. I think it's a good idea just for longevity. It's not required. It's not mentioned in the manual. Uh, but anytime you mix metals together, uh, you have the potential for corrosion. So the next thing is to put the skins on, and then from there work on the optional uh, uh, pull handle that I did order and that goes into the vertical stabilizer. So looking good, happy for the first part. Things came out pretty well. So I'm on my way and feeling good about it. Okay, we've got the skins clecoed to the struts and ribs. A couple things I'm going to point out before is anytime you have an overlapping edge, you need to put a slight bend into the edge so that after it's riveted it sits flush. Uh, RANS includes in their toolkit uh, kind of a pair of vice grips that have been converted into a, a wing bend. I had marginal success with that. There's also some other tools that I've seen on the on the, the threads and I'll post a picture of that up here for bending it. But the idea is to put a very very slight bend in there so that there is no opening after it's riveted down. The next thing you've got to do is you've got to level the wing. Uh, even though you've got all these clecos in there, they do not give you the holes for the final overlap because they want to make sure the wing is level prior to riveting. So you've got to level the wing. They tell you to put a couple clecos in the, the uh, end of the um, ribs and then level on both ends and then sandbag and hold in place. And then you're going to finally drill uh, your final set of holes down the... Uh, strut and Cleco that. Then after you drill it, you got to take everything apart, clean out, deburr, because uh, you can't have these holes uh, with the rough edge. So you got to deburr them, and then you got to air blow and clean out all the shavings from inside. So we'll have to take this whole thing apart, uh, clean everything out, and put it back together again. So on to the next step. Okay, I've removed the skin and deburred and both inside and outside edge and then on the spar same thing where we had to drill the holes into the spar outside edge and underneath uh, for deburring and you can see all the all the particles that got to get blown out with the air gun uh, and then on the other side uh, let me get over here on the other side, you can see these are some of the tools that Rans provides for in the toolkit for deburring. Uh, this big one, you, when you get a straight shot at it, 
this little guy with a crooked edge when you got to get underneath things and you can't quite get underneath and then some sandpaper to finish up and smooth everything off so now that we've got everything deburred and the holes are all drilled at level we'll put the skins back on and actually rivet this side of the stabilizer the skins are back on clay code and I'm starting riveting there are two different size rivets you got to be careful where they're going through one sheet of aluminum uh, you've got one size and then you've actually still one eighth but it's got a longer pull on it uh, the ones along the spar with the two left two skin levels are a little thicker Clico every other to get support get your rivets in there and just start pulling rivets and make sure they're flush if they're not flush you gotta drill them out put another one in so far I think I've hit them all I'm gonna do a quick update uh, I've got a lot of the rivets done in the one side of the stabilizer um, there's something important if you're gonna do the optional pull handle you need to leave these corner rivets undone uh, you can do the pull handle after uh, the skin or before as long as one sides available for cleaning out you can finish riveting one side but you got to leave these corner rivets open uh, for this support plate that gets riveted on and there's a tube that has to get glued and it needs overnight it's a it's a weld glued you put on it and that's got to sit overnight so you can do most of the side you just can't do everything okay this should be the last time I've got the vertical stabilizer skin off got all the deburring done cleaned out the inside and we're all set to Cleco and rivet the final time for the stabilizer skin the vertical stabilizer is finished skins are riveted using three different size rivets depending on how many sheets of aluminum you're going through hinges for the rudder are riveted on with the stainless steel rivets the optional pull handle assembly is installed the text instructions aren't real clear uh, but Rance has a great video on their website showing how that pull handle is installed uh, my last step will be to attach the rudder to the stabilizer and then put that aside and move on to the horizontal stabilizer next my next step is to attach the rudder to the vertical stabilizer uh, I've propped it up so they line up the text tells you to get some needle nose pliers and get in there and get the bolt and the nut on uh, same thing up top here uh, I can't get my needle nose in there so I'm coming up with a couple contraptions first thing I did was put together a socket where I could put my bolt in the end the socket was too loose then I have a magnetic pole that I've got extended pole a little magnetic end that seems to hold the end of the bolt okay so I'm gonna give that a shot I got the rudder on successfully uh, but I'm certainly not going to be one to give advice on how to do it I added a few more tools to my project to get this done added a pair of hemostats and a little open-end wrench uh, and ended up to get get those two bolts in and tighten down snugly so that the rudder's got good movement uh, but clearly there's probably a better way to do it but uh, I'll let each of you be creative and figure that out at this point uh, the manual says that you can add the vertical stabilizer tip uh, I'm gonna hold off on that for now as Aerosport sells some nice carbon fiber tips uh, with some lights in them and everything else and I think I may go that route uh, so I'm gonna hold off putting the stabilizer tip on the uh, vertical stabilizer and the rudder are finished uh, except for the tip which I mentioned I'll do later uh, my build time on this was about 12 hours for the vertical stabilizer plus four hours at the Rand's workshop to do the rudder the rudder build workshop um, so uh, 15 16 hours a time uh, to finish my first part clearly the second time round it would go a little faster I did spend a lot of time researching certain aspects and checking on rivets and certain situations that I was afraid to move forward with without getting uh, confirmation from builders before me 
Um, but I'm happy with it. Time to move on to the horizontal stabilizer, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.